Welcome back, Chase. I'm glad to be back. Yeah, sorry about the, the little bit of bumpiness there in game number one, but wow, what an end game that was. Yeah, that was pretty crazy there. Um, I think, I don't think I've seen back to back 95% accurate moves miss in a long time, and uh, you never want to be on the receiving end of that one. So I feel for uh, Snowman on that, and uh, hopefully no more 95% accurate moves missed for the rest of their 2021. Yeah, for sure. So um, I'm trying to figure out how to do the prediction real quick. Uh, let's get this going. Uh, looking at these two teams, uh, I, I have not put in you know, Poker Bros's team, got that a little last second, one sec wall. I get that in, but you can see it on screen. So do you want to talk about it? So from Woke Philosophy's end, we have Whimsicott, Spectre, Tapu Lele, Urshifu, Heatran, and Glaster. The famous, uh, I think is Popo Pokey, is the uh, the Japanese player that used this team initially, and uh, there could be some changes potentially, but it's the same six as that, with uh, what we can see as the same items. And then on Nino Poker Rose side, we have Moltres, Raichu, Gastrodon, Urshifu, Celesteela, and Incineroar. Yeah, and I'm sorry, I actually don't have an image prepared for this one. Or little script is bugging out on that so i will work um to get that up here in the rest of the time but um yeah this is going to be exciting to see um i know that uh nina poker bros has been using this team pretty extensively for a lot of series uh seven uh same as the case with amy she's been practicing a lot with this double horse and i know this is actually um i don't want to give away too much of the trade secret but a modified double horse if i'm not mistaken yeah i would tend to guess we i've talked with her a little bit about it and there are a couple changes that she wanted to make based on the way she plays the team. But I'm really interested to see Nino Pokeros team. I'm wondering if the Raichu is that the cool uh, fake out Volt Switch charm eerie impulse set. Um, potentially it could have either of those two uh, damage mitigating moves, which we've started to see more and more. I know Yoshi and Lugia, uh, she has been streaming with uh, Raichu with those, set, those two moves a decent amount recently. And uh, I think it's pretty interesting to see like what Raichu does in this metagame specifically. Yeah, so here are the leads. We see the Raichu plus Incineroar, and we see um, the... Oh my gosh, I can't. I'm I'm going to try and stop oh. doing the prediction stuff. Um, we see the Whimsicott plus that Urshifu. Um, so if we can get one of the other mods to take care of the prediction stuff, it's a little too tough to do while I'm also trying to commentate. <laughs> um, uh, usually it is Amy, so that's, uh, <laughs> that's the issue when she plays. Uh, so yeah, in this game here... Uh, that lead right there, uh, double fake out pressure coming from Nina Poke Bro from the from Poke Bros. Um, so you kind of got to be a little careful. Uh, you could do see something like fake out plus flare blitz to deny tailwind, um, and leave yourself open to that Urshifu or um, yeah, it's mm. kind of a difficult position. You you could potentially switch in the Tapu Lele as well to deny the fake outs. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I think it's something funny here. We see people in the chat were predicting uh, Surf Raichu plus Weakness Palsy and Cinema. <laughs> Not something I would have said at uh, Team Preview, but uh, the fact that we do see you see the Incineroar actually go for Fake Out and then Volt Switch from the Raichu. Into that, uh, Whimsicott. Gonna go ahead and break any potential Sash on whichever Pokemon is Sash. Um, on a team like this, you're gonna expect the Whimsicott is Sash more times than not, correct? Yeah, especially if you hit the Volt Switch into it and it doesn't deject out immediately. <laughs> uh, I would tend to guess that the Whimsicott has the Sash. Yeah, exactly. That is a nice little bit of testing to make sure that, like, okay, is this Whimsicott actually? And we actually see a Trick Room come out from uh, Woke Flossy with this Whimsicott. Uh, interesting play here. Now the Incineroar is the fastest Pokemon in the field. Yeah, I would say that this is not a particularly great position for Trick Room to be up. Obviously, the Pokemon in the back probably benefit from it more than the current Whimsicott and the Urshifu. Um, but it's going to be difficult to get attacks off because if you potentially lose an Urshifu speed tie, you could lose both their Pokemon this turn without getting anything off. Yeah, definitely, definitely a little bit precarious. Yeah, I know that with the original version of this team, the Trick Room mode was meant for things like a mirror match with opposing Spectre or Whimsicott uh, and things of that sort, or opposing Urshifu is a big issue with this team uh, if you can't deal with it with a Tapu Lele. So maybe potentially in a game two, uh, Wolf Falsy decides Tapu Lele is the way, seeing how it's just an awkward position currently with Trick Room up in game one. Yeah, no, no joke. Tapu Lele, I, I will say I've been using this team pretty extensively myself. Tapu Lele is one of my most broad Pokemon alongside the Spectre. Um, Spectre, more often than not, is my Dynamax target, and this Heatran is something that I use really selectively um, to counter. Uh, but yeah, really nice play there, switching in to get the Flash Fire boost as the uh, Urshifu goes for the close combat, almost entirely taking out this Glass Chair. 
Yeah, at this point, at least we know this, that this Urshifu is not a uh, choice band based on that damage. Um, it's either, I don't know, Sash, Black Glasses, something of that sort. Um, I would tend to guess it's not Sash based on the fact that there's a Raichu on the team, but I'm not particularly sure what other item it could be. So my guess is Black Glasses, but I don't know. Yeah, I guess we'll see here. Um, if something like uh, an attack from the glass here comes out into that Urshifu and does not KO it, um, then the Heatran is obviously going to be your Dynamax target in this game at this point kind mm -hmm. of by process of elimination because you're not going to dynamax a whimsicott you're not going to be dynamaxing um a really low hp uh glass shear and you're also not going to be dynamaxing uh, a nurshifu more times than not mm -hmm. oh it is air bloom right i guess we missed that in game in the beginning of the game so i would assume it is actually sash on the urshifu at that point as we yeah. see the take that flash share with the sucker punch yeah being able to change that move right there pretty much confirms that it's going to be uh, sash as it goes down there uh, to the focus sash that we mentioned so uh, a, a little bit of patience and we get all the information right mm -hmm. yeah at this point Heatran seems in a pretty good position honestly um, with the incinero on the back you can just max quake that with and sadly flash fire doesn't work where you get a special attack boost but you only get a fire type attack boost mm -hmm. otherwise Heatran would be in an even better position but um he trying kind of looking at everything as long as Gashadon's not in the back can kind of just max here and potentially win. Yeah, for sure. Uh, definitely in a much better position after that flash fire boost, catching the Whimsicott switch in. Um, but uh, now with this Urshifu, it is down on its sash. Probably going to have to go for something like um, a, a Sucker Punch if it wants to get any more damage off. Um, so maybe trying to predict exactly uh, which Pokemon's going to go for that Sucker Punch and uh, being able to pivot around. Yeah, I think Wolf Wolf, we probably had a bit of a safer play in bringing the Urshifu in initially and then max it, or then attacking into the opposing Urshifu, allowing you to get two KOs as long as there's no fake out and not taking damage if there is a fake out. Mm -hmm. But she's choosing just to max the Heatran this turn and kind of baiting an attack into that Whimsicott and switching it back into the Urshifu. Yeah, it looks like we ha now have the current pull up. Uh, Rollercoaster has done that for us. Thanks so much, Rollercoaster. It looks like you did do it right. Um, yeah, uh, for sure. I think that. Yeah, trying to predict the Sucker Punch, something like Protect plus Dazzling Gleam could have been an interesting play. Uh, could be punished by, you know, a potential of calling that and going for something like um, Close Combat. <laughs> could end up pretty poorly as the Whimsicott is faster than the Surshifu. Um, so not able to to KO it before it can potentially do a ton of damage into a protecting um, Heatran. Yeah, I think it's it's very interesting to see the way Neo Pokeballs is trying to favor around this Heatran, which seems like a particularly poor matchup again without that Gastron. And as we see the Incineroar coming in, I think we can guess Gastron's probably not the last one in the back. Yeah, you would probably want to see that in Trick Room at some point, um, <laughs> earlier rather than later, before this Trick Room goes ahead and expires and uh, the Whimsicott's in a position to potentially set something like a Tailwind and be able to outspeed and outpace the majority of Pokeballs' team. Yeah, and at this point, um, Amy just has to hope that you New know, Poke Bros doesn't make some smart targeting with like a fake out into Urshifu. And like, you have to kind of call is it fake out into Urshifu or is it Flare Blitz into Urshifu? Or is it Parting Shot into Heatran? Because all three are viable plays. Mm -hmm. and instead, she's kind of preserving the the um, Urshifu and making like the safest possible play, switching out into the Whimsicott, not taking a Parting Shot or a Sucker Punch into either of those slots. Yeah, so uh, we actually see the Urshifu just go ahead and pivot out here as the Celesteel is the last one. If it's catching a Fire-type move, the Celesteel is probably going to be gone. Yeah, I would say switching in a Celesteel to a Max Heatran is probably not your safest play, oh. as it does work out this turn with the Max Quake going into Incineroar. Yeah, uh, it is now going to be plus one special defense on this Heatran, uh, which will be nice for that Celesteela. Celesteel is going to struggle to find moves to hit. <laughs> hey, what's going on, Jin Fury? Thanks so much for the follow. Yeah, I think at this point we can tell that the Incineroar is probably Assault Vest based on the amount of damage it took from that max Heatran Max Quake. Yeah. Um, and at this point, I mean, you can't particularly parting shot the Heatran, so your only option is to Snarl it. Uh, and you have to somehow find a way to Dynamax the Celesteela with a Heatran still as an opponent on the field, which is going to be uh, a little tough, I would say. Yeah, uh, this... Uh... This Heatran definitely in a good position here. Uh, Celesteel is going to have to be really, really careful about pivoting around. So, um, do we see the turns of uh, or the turns of uh, Trick Room expire? 
I believe there's still at least one more counter trick room left. Yeah. Okay. That, that's the one the one piece that I was wondering because it might um, you know feel a little counterintuitive, but you probably are gonna want Tailwind for this um, Heatran uh, at some point against this opposing team. The Celesteela here can go for super effective moves into the Whimsicott. Um, it looks like it has expired as Whimsicott right. is the first person is the first Pokemon to move and the Max Flare is just going to be enough to go first into the Celesteela Sun Boosted Flash sun boosted, Fire Boosted. Flash fire. Yeah, that's <laughs> goodbye Celesteela. Yeah, I, I don't even think a specially defensive <laughs> Celesteela is going to take that one. Yeah, I think you could have been specially defensive assault vest and still oh, there's another 95% <laughs> accurate move we see miss. So though missing the Whimsicott is not that big of a deal. Um, It'd be a lot better to miss that than to miss on the Heatran, although I think Dazzling Gleam kind of is in a pinning position at this point. Dazzling Gleam plus Earth Power might just win the game. Yeah, uh, the opposing Urshifu, because it is Sash, can go for something like a Protect, but you can only Protect for so long when you are slower than the Whimsicott. Yeah, and at this point, I mean, maybe Tailwind is probably safer in case the Urshifu Protects and the Incineroar somehow lives. Um, but even then, you can always just sucker punch the Urshifu continuously. Yeah. And uh, Earth Power with your Urshifu in the back. And there's not really anything that Neo Pokeballs can do, even if this Incineroar somehow survives the Earth Power, which it might. Yeah, it is a Salt Vested, as we've seen. And as uh, you spoke it into existence, here we go. One HP. Uh, it does live. Yeah. But I mean, at this point, it gets KO'd to its own Flare Bliss Recoil, and now you just continuously close combat and Earth Power or Flash Cannon into the Urshifu, and the Urshifu can't target two Pokemon at once. Yeah, indeed. So uh, pretty uh, pretty well played here from Amy, pivoting around, getting this Heatran in the best possible position, and she's able to just go ahead and uh, close out this game pretty cleanly. Yeah, I would say it's a, probably as clean as possible considering how the early game went and the awkwardness of position with getting your Blast Drill close combat and not getting anything off. Um, potentially she wants to lead with the Tapu Lele um, in game two and you know once you got Tapu Lele just take out Pokemon knowing now that the right two is not Sash you have pretty much a free Moonblast or Psychic into it um, and I mean honestly Moonblast is pretty good into really anything here yeah the only thing that really wants to take that is a Celesteela which would similarly take Psychic just as well um, mm -hmm. so you know that's that's probably the only Pokemon that uh, doesn't really care about catching a, a moon blast or an attack from this Tapu Lele, but Tapu Lele also gonna be really nice being able to shut down any of those uh, priority moves into Wolf Fossey's team. So uh, kind of nullifying the fake out, double fake out pressure from the mm -hmm. Raichu and the um, <laughs> and the Incineroar. Yeah, and I would say like Heatran with speed control is the key to this matchup as we saw in game one. Uh, potentially Trick Room is not the correct speed control considering that the Incineroar is slower and has Snarl. Um, so maybe going with Tailwind plus Heatran, like Tapu Lele, Whimsicott, Heatran, and then Force Pokemon, or Tapu Lele, Urshifu, whatever you choose here. I think Tapu, as we see, Whimsicott, Tapu Lele, Heatran are the three that are coming. You probably want Urshifu last one as it's looking like, but you can yeah. kind of justify any of the, the three Pokemon that are left behind. Yeah, having this Tailwind option, especially against opposing teams that don't have Tailwind, the um, Poke Bros's team just has access to two Pokemon that can go for things like max air streams, um, but taking two turns to get to the same speed, speed priority that Woke Fossey can do on turn one before it can even attack, and getting to threaten so much damage with the Tapu Lele, um, Moltres doesn't look like it's going to have a whole lot of fun here. Um, we see an interesting lead here with Gastrodon plus the Raichu. Yeah, um... I don't think this Gastron's probably going to max turn one, so you can really just tail in side shot KO the Raichu, and there's really nothing that um, that Nino Poker Bros can do to kind of take advantage of it without maxing the Gastron. And even then, you can only get anything out of it if you say max ooze either of these two Pokemon or max Hailstorm the Whimsicott, which I would say it probably doesn't carry. Yeah, uh, if I had to guess, um, probably going to be something like uh, water. Uh, ground yawn protect or recover um, mm -hmm. for for yawn potentially um, or for protect either uh, but yeah I, I think that they, they tend to be the citrus berry variant being a little bit bulkier it's obviously scary Pokemon to run with a uh, real boom kind of rising in usage in the format but also the ability uh, to kind of shut down um, certain types of uh, self-proc from colossal is really nice 
people, we do see the max though from this Gastron immediately. And fun fact about Gastron, uh, plus two defense Gastron with a Rindo Berry that's Dynamax doesn't or gets KO'd by Choice Bandle and Hammer from Rillaboom. Yeah. I believe. Yeah, so Rindo Berry not really doing a whole lot of favors. You just gotta know you can't bring it to a Rillaboom matchup. Uh, yeah. But here we do see that turn one Dynamax coming out from the Gastrodon. The Tailwind will come out from this Whimsicott. And we're gonna see the Tapu Lele should be the next Pokemon to move here. It's gonna go for a Moonblast into this Raichu, um, which is just enough to take it out. Yeah, um, <laughs> as a single, former singles player, there is nothing scarier than a Specs Tapu Lele. Yeah. Uh, there's no, especially in a format like this where uh, Alolan Muk does not exist, uh, Tyranitar's usage is minimal. Um, there's nothing really stopping it from spamming. It's like incredibly strong uh, specs moves. Yeah. Yeah. So now Celesteela is the other Pokemon that can kind of wall against this Tapu Lele. Um, not in the safest position here, but it kind of, it's already taken out one. And if uh, this is the remaining Pokemon, you know that the Celesteela now can't be a Dynamax target. Um, so you should just be able to handle that with your Heatran. Um, you just got to take care of this Gastrodon before your Heatran can come, can come in and do a bunch of damage. Yeah. If you, like, you could potentially helping him Moonblast the Gastrodon this turn and do enough damage to it, uh, to where when your Heatran comes in, you can just, like, even if you get double KO'd here, if the Gastrodon goes in Wicked Blow plus, um, plus Max Quake range, then you're in a really good position. Yeah. Yeah, especially with the speed control here. Uh, we do see here, it is the helping hand play. Um, it looks like... Uh, the Moonblast will come out as 40%. That's Dynamax plus one special defense Gastron, by the way. <laughs> the Heavy Slam should be enough to just go and take out the Tapu Lele here, but because the Focus Sash hasn't been procced, unless we see something with the residual damage, uh, we're, we should see the Whimsicott survive this turn. Yes, we see Max Geyser. Uh, well, at this point, I think you just have a free Urshifu Helping Hand Wicked Blow into the Gastron. Because I don't think plus one Celesteela KOs with anything. I don't think Heavy Slam at plus one KOs Urshifu. So you can kind of just deal with that. And then, okay, now you bring in your Heatran. You wait for Rain to end and you kind of destroy everything with fire moves. Yeah, exactly. It's definitely going to be uh, <laughs> uh, a much safer position here. Um, Woke Fossey here taking the strategy of just kind of delaying the Dynamax and just getting as much damage down into Poke Bros' Dynamax as possible. Uh, taking out the Raichu before it could do anything whatsoever with that Specs Moonblast. And then now, um, you know, in this position where this is going to put the um, <laughs> the Gastrodon in a really precarious position, if it lives. Yeah, I was going to say, if it can manage to live this attack and... <laughs> oh! Oh, it does! Um, potentially proccing a Citrus Berry. Oh, we don't see a Berry here. Uh, I do not believe Heavy Slam gets this KO. No, it's uh, that's only going to be yeah. about 50%, but maybe a Max Geyser. Looks like the play is going to be Max Quake going for additional special defense boost into the Celesteela, and that is enough to pick up the KO on Urshifu, though. Yeah, I I mean, that's nice, but like, <laughs> now Heatran comes in, KOs the Gastron, and what do you do from there? Yeah, I mean, honestly, at this point, the Whimsicott can just KO the Gastron with... Um... Yeah, you could like Dazzling Gleam Flare this turn, I would... Probably double the Gastron just in case Dazzle doesn't KO because it is plus two special defense Gastron. Yeah. Although I would just guess that Dazzling Gleam picks it up from here. It is at such uh, low HP right there. Yeah, that's a Dazzling Gleam range. You can just Dazzling Gleam Flare, get your terrain, your correct terrain up, and uh, I don't think there's a Pokemon in the back that could defeat Heatran in the sun. Maybe Urshifu. Uh, so maybe you want to try to keep your Whimsicott around. Um, but yeah. Maybe the play then is to double the Celesteela with the Dazzle plus Flare in case the Gastron potentially protects, although I don't think Gastron protects here. I think Gastron <laughs> just goes down to Dazzling Gleam. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm kind of curious what the other move Potentially an Ice move on this Gastron, you think? Uh, I'm just kind of wondering, a non-Citrus Berry, so I'm curious what its moveset's going to be. Because um, I feel like Citrus kind of is like the most common bulky. Um, it might be a Rindo Berry set here, given the fact yeah. that... I would guess that I, I would guess you're right there with the Rindle Berry. Oh, and I forgot to update the overlay. My bad, y'all. But again, 
Rindo Berry Gastron non Dynamax still dies to Band of Grassy Glide from <laughs> really cool. Yeah. It still dies to plus two Colossal. Like, you have to max to take out Colossal. We do see the Dazzling Gleam play here, and that's enough to pick off the KO on Gastrodon, get a little bit of chip down on Celesteel, and not a whole lot. And now there's going to be a Max Flare here in the rain. Um, so, you know, not doing a ton of damage, but uh, will critically change the weather back in the favor of Loke Flossy here for the final turn. Or for I the final that, Pokemon. There potentially could be an issue here with if Urshifu comes in. Um, it being Sash with only Heatran left, potentially can survive a, a combination of one max move into a KO with close combat. Um, this Celesteel is... Uh, is it plus three at this point? Plus two? Oh, and it's special uh, defense boosting. It's not special attack boosting. Yeah, and at the... I mean... Yeah, you can be plus two or plus three special defense all, or even yeah. plus four special defense all you want. And it's not gonna, uh, not gonna land a max still going to beat at one v one. Yeah, it is the Urshifu is the final Pokemon here. Uh, so now this Sash Urshifu is in a position where it it's gonna get two attacks. Yeah, I think you probably want to Steel Spike just so you can survive. Maybe a second, so you can Steel Spike this turn and then Flare the next turn. Um, just so you take less from the next close combat. Uh, even if Urshifu somehow protects this turn, that's it. A perfect situation if you still spike into it to break the sash mm -hmm. uh, although i would say it's a bit of a misplay to protect here if you're the urshifu yeah i agree um we do see just the close combat come out um gonna be doing about 60 percent damage so i'm curious after a steel spike uh now obviously this should go ahead and do quite a bit of damage after the minus one defense minus one special defense is enough to just take it down to sash um and you gotta try and live another one <laughs> Yeah, and the issue here is that Celesteel is probably going for a Leech Seed. Yep. As that probably should seal the game here, because even if it's not in range of close combat now, it's in range of Leech Seed plus close combat plus another Leech Seed, so you can just protect close combat again. Yeah. Yep, gonna go ahead and take that uh, energy from the Heatran. Looks like uh, Nino Pokebros has put himself in a position to go ahead and take this game number two, barring uh, some kind of crazy plays here. Yeah, and I think, I mean, Heatran was a good max option, yes. You had to probably um, fix, like, get your turns of Tailwind correct a little bit better, I would say, mm -hmm. uh, in order to get this to work. But the Celesteel goes for Protect, as we thought, as we might just see this close combat KO in, in this game. The issue is you need better speed control around Heatran, and oh. you need to... Heatran oh. lives on 2 HP. But it is just going to go down to the Leech Seed. Yeah, it's going to go down to the Leech Seed, that's right. I completely forgot about the Leech Seed in that moment. I just see it get that critical survival right there. It's going to make it a 1v1. Uh, and how many times do you see a Celesteel beat a Heatran? Uh, not that much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it is plus 5 special defense or whatever Celesteel at this point. With multiple KOs and multiple Max Quake boosts. Yeah. Uh, but I, I would say you generally don't see it, especially in the sun. But um, yeah, we should just see a game three again. Is this the second game three of the night already? This is our second game three of the night. Luckily, we're moving a little bit faster along in this one than the last one. But yeah, uh, here we go. Game number three. We've got Nino Poke Bros versus Woke Flossy yet again. Uh, this matchup has been pretty fun so far, uh, getting to see all the kind of different pieces, especially uh, as someone who pilots a very similar team to Amy thus far in the series. I don't use the Heatran quite as much, um, but it is there specifically for that Celesteela matchup. Yeah, that's like one of two or three matchups that's really important for. Um, it's really important for opposing Glaster. That's a big thing, especially opposing Double Horse. Heatran kind of just wrecks Double Horse generally. Mm -hmm. um, the issue here is you have a Gastron and an Urshifu and a Snarl with Salt Vest and Cinnor that the Heatran kind of can't work its way through. Um, if you can somehow find a way to get Spectre to work, maybe that's the play. Um, but it's going to be really difficult. Yeah, especially against something like the Sash um, Urshi. A little bit scary to run Spectre against that. Mm -hmm. Although with Terrain up and the combination of Dazzling Gleam from Whimsicott and Spectre's attacks, um, it might be possible, but I think you still need the Lele in this game. It's just about positioning it. To a point where it doesn't just die to a heavy slam from Celesteela. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And the thing is, is you don't have a ton of incredible switches, switch ins to that heavy slam. You could switch in the Heatran, but then you leave yourself open to the potential of an attack from the opposing Pokemon. And if that's if that's your case, Heatran's probably going to end up being your Dynamax target. So 
a little bit challenging, right? Yeah, I think um, a really a really interesting thing here is if the Tapu Lele potentially Dynamaxes, it walls the Celesteela because <laughs> the Celesteela's Heavy Slam will do nothing. Um, although I'm not saying that's the right play, I'm just saying it's possible. But um, it's looking like Amy's having a tough time choosing which four Pokemon she wants here, deciding Spectre or Lele first, and maybe not even bringing the Heatran at all this game is what it's looking like. Yeah, so I think that might be an interesting play is the uh, opposing Gastrodon really is there to be good against the Heatran. If uh, you force uh, the po if you force Pokebros into bringing that Gastrodon, um, then it's in a much more precarious position if that's your Dynamax target um, and you've got something like a Spectre here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, an interesting thing is after that game one bringing the Glastier, never choosing to bring it again after seeing kind of how um, it kind of just got defeated pretty quickly by that close combat on the switch in. Yeah, for sure. So uh, we see a change up in leads from both sides yet again. We've got Whimsicott and Spectre against the opposing Incineroar and the Celesteela. Um, interesting positioning here. Uh, Obviously, the Celesteela being the sub leech seed set, um, or not sub leech seed, but the protect leech seed set with Heavy Slam, gives you a lot of information about it. It's gonna basically just want to go ahead and get leech seeds up onto the onto the Spectre, um, and it might be something where, uh, you know, I, it could also go for a, like a flash cannon plus the fake out into the Whimsicott, which puts Whimsicott in a pretty dangerous position, right? Yeah, I mean, like you, you definitely could see the Heavy Slam plus the fake out into the Whimsicott. The other issue is that the Incineroar is pretty free to click Snarl here, and there's not really a way through that because of the, the Pokemon on the field full of Flossy. As I believe we saw she put Will-O-Wisp on this Spectre, something it normally doesn't carry. Yeah, interesting. Trying to mix a little bit more of that supportive set with the fully offensive. I think that probably the reasoning behind that, typically it runs Protect or Taunt, right, in that fourth support slot. Um, I guess usually she's not bringing it if she's not maxing, so... Will-O-Wisp gets you just the same amount as uh, Max Guard. So the Fake Out will be denied here uh, by the Psychic Terrain switch in, and we see good amount of damage there from the Shadow Ball into the Celesteela as the Heavy Slam comes out. This time, again into that type of Lele, gonna be doing enough damage for a one-hit KO. Lele came, and all that it did was set that Psychic Terrain, denying the Fake Out. Yeah, and now this is an incredibly rough position if you're Will Flossy because there's no way through a plus one special defense Celesteel plus a Snarling Incineroar yeah. at this point with, with the um, Spectre. And there's not really a way to bring it. I mean, you can bring an Urshifu here, but I mean, it's it's a tough position to be in at this point, I would say. Yeah, really, really tough positioning. And uh, to, to make her way out of it, I think she's going to have to do some really fancy maneuvering and footwork here. Um, so we do see opting to go ahead and bring in that um, Urshifu here does pressure a close combat onto the opposing Incineroar. Um, mm. So potentially getting some big damage down before a Snarl can get off. But that Celesteel is going to be such an issue here. Yeah, I think it's important to know that the, the Spectre still can Dynamax. And by Dynamaxing, we'll get max Phantasm boosts. As it's actually looking like the Spectre is switching out. Uh, a potential option would have been to Phantasm that Celesteel and close combat the Incineroar, guaranteeing the KO with a minus one defense. Yeah, for sure. Interesting pivot around here, not really wanting to give up your Spectre or not really wanting to put it in a super precarious position, but potentially just throwing your Whimsicott in to take uh, a, a Snarl to proc the, um, to, uh, I'm sorry, proc the uh, Focus Sash and then whatever attack might come out from the Celesteela. Looks like Wicked Blow is going to be targeting into the Celesteela. Going to be enough for the one hit KO right there, um, taking it out ignoring that special defense boost and just putting yourself in a better position as we actually see darkest lariat not the snarl coming out from this incineroar into that whimsicott slot breaks the focus sash but now this whimsicott is free to go for whatever prankster moves that it wants except for well yeah sorry this one isn't fake tears anymore i'm sorry this is helping hand variant so yeah and uh interestingly enough here this incineroar isn't carrying a pivoting move um we've seen fake out flare blitz darkest lariat and snarl so far so we know it's four moves and it's not carrying either U-turn or um, parting shot. Yeah, so. we we guessed that it was uh, assault vest based on the damage that it took in game one, so it couldn't be running um, parting shot. But U-turn is pretty typical on those to kind of guarantee the ability to pivot in and out and get um, get uh, big <laughs> intimidates back down and 
make yourself as annoying as possible with also pressuring fake out. In a game like this, fake out pressure, not really all as important with the psychic train up, but still Incineroar definitely has a place here um, with that stab um, dark type moves. We are gonna see a Dynamax here. It is yet again gonna be this Gastrodon. Yeah, and uh, I mean, this Gastron is taking 55-60% from a Helping Hand Wicked Blow like we saw last time, potentially putting it in range of a Spectre Max Phantasm. Although, I think at this point, if you can KO the Urshifu this turn, then you can kind of just win the game if you're Neo Focal Rose. Yeah, for sure. So here we do see the Helping Hand come out onto this Urshifu. It's going to go for that Wicked Blow into the Gastrodon, doing 65% damage right there. Yeah, and at this point, I mean, we're seeing the Flare Blitz probably into the Whimsicott, although it could be... Yeah, we see it into the Urshifu. And, uh... Oh, gets the burn! I'm not sure if that matters, because I assume we're also going to see a double up. No, we don't see a oh. double up. Oh. That's well, huge. At this point, I would say this Incineroar kind of would have won the game anyways, because this Urshifu can't switch um, moves, and mm -hmm. it cannot hit close combat. So there's not really a way to hit it, so you can just Wicked Blow, you can, or you can continuously Dark Flare and Snarl. Uh, but that's a really rough burn to have happen, especially now you're taking 12.5% per, per turn with the Hail plus the burn. Yeah, and, and also uh, it looks like another Wicked Blow was probably enough for that Gastrodon if you wanted to use your Spectre um, going for, you know, something like a Mud Shot into, or a Max Quake, I should say, into that um, Incineroar. Trying to get as much damage as possible, but yeah, that's that's really rough for the Flare Blitz burn here in game mm -hmm. number three. And the other thing is, we assume that there's still the Sash um, Urshifu in the back for um, Nino Poke Bros, which, will which would probably clean up this game any anyways, but it's still really rough to see that burn happen. Yeah, no, no joke there. Well, at least we're going to get to see Dynamax Horse, which is always uh, honestly one of my favorite Pokemon in the format. And I'm glad it, we finally figured it out after, I don't know, Players' Cup qualifying for Players' Cup 2 and for the regional stage didn't really have it. But once we saw Players' Cup finals, uh, that's kind of when it took off. Yeah, I will say that uh, based on aesthetics alone, I chose Ghost Horse in my first playthrough. Recognizing Ice Horse was probably going to be a better VGC Pokemon, but... I have enough playthroughs where, you know, I can uh, <laughs> I can afford to get one that I just like. I did, I will say I did hunt it for specifically zero attack IV, so I have one ready to go. We see the Max Phantasm here into Incineroar, not really going to be doing a whole lot of damage, but uh, more importantly, is going to be getting minus one uh, defense onto both of these Pokemon. Um, probably trying to try offset some of that uh, chip from the burn or some of the damage mitigation from the burn is, oh, that's just not enough to KO. Yeah, it might be just enough after, um, after hail, but that's still oh, as I just oh, continuously critical hits and burns. <laughs> yeah, I believe the last three attacks have either burnt or critical hit. Well, glossy so far, and uh, will we get a, a crit max quake just to go with this to take out this? Uh, oh, both of them into the spectre actually. Interesting. Kind of ignoring this Urshifu, uh, which now has access to uh, attacks on minus one um, Pokemon on the other side of the field. And it's going to get it to move before uh, another attack from uh, this from the Incineroar. So I don't know. How much do you think a minus two Incineroar takes from a Wicked Blow? Not that much, <laughs> I would say. It's probably taking like 25%, 30% maybe, <laughs> considering that it's minus two Incineroar but burnt Urshifu. Um, I'd, really, I'd like to say taking out the Urshifu is probably the... A safer play but now you can just wicked blow the the spectre and get that ko and then you just beat the opposing urshifu because that urshifu cannot go for anything other than minus like burnt wicked blow yeah uh, the um poke bros urshifu will go down if it's taken down to sash this turn which is you know important to note um but will we'll likely be taking out that spectre in exchange it might even be uh, non is that non-banded uh sucker punch ranger oh it's uh psychic train is still up so i take that back yeah so, I mean, like, honestly, at this point, the, if the Urshifu could change moves, Will Colossi would be in a really good position and be able to quit close combat and do everything left. But because the Spectre doesn't have max strike and because the Urshifu is locked into Wicked Blow and against two dark types, uh, it's going to be a pretty tough position. Yeah, so it looks like she's just going to go for the max quick here into that uh, opposing... Okay, looks like we had a little stutter there. I was worried. I thought something was Dynamaxing again. I was very confused. 
It looks like that uh, is just going to go ahead and only take down about 50% uh, of the remaining HP. So now that opposing Incineroar is at about 25%. Yeah, and I mean, I don't think Wicked Bullet takes it off from here, sadly. Does it? Oh, and it went into the Urshifu, which did like 14%. <laughs> yeah, that is really sad to see. Uh, the Wicked Bullet comes into the Spectre. I think that she was probably going for the crit Max Quake into the um, into oh, the Incineroar. Oh, wait, you say there was another crit, but it was Wicked Bullet. It always crits. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I remember I saw that on the, the, the final hit on the last game where it was just enough to get the Metagross, and I was like, oh, a crit, and I was like, oh, it's surging strikes it always crits uh, but it was a high roll crit is what i'll say because the first two yeah. looked like it was gonna be just out of range so yeah that's gonna seal it up there for uh pokey bros as they are uh, as he has now taken the set um in uh one two fashion from mm -hmm. yeah uh really great adjustments there game one that heatran doing so much damage and uh being such a menace to pivoting around and realizing gastrodon was the answer there in games two yeah. and three I will say my two thoughts before I go is one, um, always critting a move is better than, potentially better or worse than it being like Wicked Bullet being 120 base power, <laughs> not even, not just for the basic things of it goes through screens, it goes through drops and all that, but the interesting thing about it is it also increases damage variance because you have your general spread of damage that is now increased by 1.5 the amount it could have done beforehand. So the low end is still the same, but the high end is like 1.5 times higher than a normal high end of a damage roll, mm -hmm. which is really weird. Uh, and it often comes into play that Urshifu feels a lot stronger than it actually should be. Um, but that's like a big reason about that.